I think I thank God for um, this ministry. I thank God for the truth today. You know, this we're just vessels. You know, um, we don't take offerings. We don't you know we don't preach for money. We do this because God called us to ministry. It's a difference from being called to ministry. You know, from being man appointed and God anointed. You know, I was just a barber and was bright and thought I was going to make all this money. And God had a different plan for me, and I thank God for it now today. Um, so we're gonna get into it. Um, I'm talking about the mindset, the right mindset for ministry and marriage. The right mindset for ministry and marriage, because the same mindset you have for ministry is the same mindset you have to have for marriage. I'll say that again, you have to have that same mindset. It kind of mirrors each other. Brother Rick, aka the voice. We call it, that's his nickname because he has such a wonderful reading voice. Are you in position, beloved? Brother. Amen. Uh, we're going to start from 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 11. Um, as you go in there, brother, I'll just give y'all guys a little, I'm going to give y'all guys a little backdrop of what's going on. So Hannah, you know, we're going to be going through the book of Samuel and our men's fellowship. But as I go here, I've seen some something here that was really, that's hot into the day's message. And Hannah's mindset. Hannah's way and Hannah's, uh, you know, her thought process was powerful to me as a woman, right? She had the right mindset for marriage and ministry. She had the right mindset for both. And her testimony, her life was to me profound. So we're going to start from uh, 1 Samuel uh, chapter 1, verse 11. Brother Rick, whenever you're ready, I'll stop you uh, when, you, when I need to cue you in. Thank you. Yes. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but will, will give thou unto thine handmaid a man child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. And it came to pass, as she continued praying for the Lord, that Eli marked her mouth. Now Hannah, she spake in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she had been drunken. And Eli said unto her, How long wilt thou be drunken? Put away thine wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, No, my lord, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Amen. You can stop right there. Count now thine handmaid. For... Go ahead. Go ahead. Finish it, brother. Go ahead. You can stop at this verse. Count now thine handmaid for a daughter of Bilal, for the abundance of my grief. Now, this is profound. You know, um, give you guys a little bit of what's going on here. Hannah was barren. She couldn't have a child. Uh, her husband had another wife that had children. The other wife used to make Hannah feel, you know, bad because see back in the back in those days being barren you was scoffed at they looked at you like you ain't got no children what you was like a, you know ridiculed and she prayed she said lord I, you know lord if you just give me a man child i would dedicate him to you and um the thing about hannah is that she wanted her created purpose she wanted her created purpose her created purpose meant more to her than anything you know they said she poured her soul out Right to the Lord, like meaning that the only thing that really mattered, mattered to Hannah was not what was going on with her husband, with the other woman, not what was going on with other things, but the only thing mattered to her is what, what God was going to do through her. See, for women, for a woman, you know, as a men, guys, sometimes we don't, we can't understand women because that created purpose thing is so deep. God put something deep inside a woman that as men, sometimes we don't get. I know I didn't get it at times, you know. And it's it's interesting to me that she wanted it to a point where, you know, even uh, Eli was like, what's wrong with you? You drinking? He said, no, I'm not drinking. I, you don't understand. I want my creative purpose. I have to have it. And we live in a world today where the creative purpose is kind of like pushed to the back burner. Women like, I ain't messing up my figure. This is more about me now. I got to do my thing. We live in a world now, girl, do you, right? Right? You only, you know, you only live once. There's all these statements and things that, the society teaches women to move them from their created purpose. See, your created purpose as a woman is everything. That's your relationship with God. It has everything to do with what God wants to do. Amen. 
The Bible says you should be saved through childbearing. It's something that women go through that's way deeper. No, listen, men, we don't have the ability to do what a woman does. How they carry children, carry life, push life, nurture life. We, we, well, that's all them. That's within them. That's something that we just go, wow. For those men in here that have children, right? Because God has created something in them intrinsically unique to have to have the created purpose for childbearing. And I thought it was powerful that she sought God to a point where her purpose and, you know, meant more than her than anything. And to truly be a woman of God, your created purpose have to be more important than your, your worldly successes in life. You know, how big you're going to become, how much money you good, your, your beauty, because women beauty is very important to them as well. You know, we know it all fades away. We know it's all vanity, but it's important. It means something to a woman. It means something to them. It's very deep. I don't understand. I'm like, honey, you look great. I don't, you ain't saying it right. You'll get mad at me. I'm like, honey, you know. Preach, <laughs> preach. <laughs> no, that's, I don't see the look in your eyes. You're not looking at me. Okay, we'll look you. Look Amen, great. brother. Amen. Right? But the thing is, is we have to understand. We have to learn to love our wives men. I'm going to get to only men in a minute because y'all ain't getting away. Y'all ain't getting away. I'm getting to the woman right now, but I'm getting to y'all shortly. But back to the woman, right? We have, they have to understand that their created purpose is everything. Y'all created purpose and what God purposed y'all to be mothers is more important and more essential than anything you accomplish on earth. That is the thing that God has made y'all to do. Stand alone by yourselves. No help is made when a woman raises children and carries children. That is a standalone job. We think we know what they're going through. We don't. When my wife was in there having those contractions, I was like, honey, is that bad? She said, shut up. You don't know what I'm going through right now. And I had to, <laughs> had to step back and understand that, wow, this is a deep thing. This is a really deep thing here. Hmm. And, and one thing about Hannah is that she wanted it so it meant everything to her. She had a husband that had another wife with children. And she said, you know what? I'm being ridiculed by her. But right now, Lord, if you just do this for me, Lord, if you just give me my creative purpose, I will dedicate my son to you all the days of his life. And he became Samuel the prophet, an awesome man of God. The one thing that she wanted and that meant to her, nothing else meant anything to her. And sometimes today, women, you know, women think about a lot of things, man. They have a lot of things on their mind to us that it might seem minute to us, but it's important to them. And I'm going to realize that as I get older, but she was single-minded. Women, you got to be careful having too many minds because I know you guys are having so many things going through your head. I'm sure, I, I, I don't know because I'm not a woman, but I'm sure that you guys are hearing this voice, that voice, this voice, and many voices, but you got you to make sure you hear the Lord's voice over all those voices. He has to supersede those voices. He has to supersede all the stuff that y'all thinking and hearing and feeling at the time. The word of God has to supersede those things. And it's hard. It's not easy because life is telling you one thing. Your flesh is pulling you this direction. You know, you're scared of this. You're worried about this. You're thinking about your life, you're thinking about your looks. You're thinking about this. You're going to love me. You're thinking about all these things that men, we just don't understand at times, unfortunately, guys. But if you keep your eyes on the Lord, if you keep your focus on him and his word, and you stay in line with your created purpose as mothers, it, your, your ministry will become clear to you. Your ministry will become very clear. A woman's ministry don't start outside of four walls of her home. See, there's another thing Hannah knew. Hannah knew my son is my ministry. My children is my ministry. My husband, my family, ministry, ministry for women are different from us. Their ministry starts when they open their eyes in the morning. A true, a true mother, their ministry is hard work. It's no joke to be a mother. It's no joke. Amen. You know, like, wow. I'm starting to look and understand like, wake up, their ministry starts ministry start soon, they wake up. My ministry starts when I go prepare the message and, you know, I, talk, I sit with my other brother and the other ministers and we talk together and we cooperate on what we're going to do with a, a woman's ministries all day. Amen. You know, this morning, she started cooking. She started tending to her son. She had to teach him, go do sing praises, teach him about the Bible, teach him how to worship God. Her ministry is hands on. That's a beautiful ministry being a mother. That is a remarkable ministry, guys. And today's woman will tell you, that ministry is not all that. There ain't nothing in that. You can be doing other things. It's more important things. What about your career? What about, you know, being out here and doing things? And you know, the world tells you these things. And the world has an influence. And our culture influences us, right? And our Gentile way, I call it, influences women as well. And men too. But women is a little bit more deeper. And I'm just here to share with you today that her focus was her created purpose. She was single-minded. She was unselfish. And she sought the Lord. She poured her soul out to the Lord and said, Lord, 
This is, I need this, Lord. I don't need, I need this more than I need oxygen. My creative purpose means more to me than anything. Anything. It means more to me than what he's doing with his other wife. I don't care what he got going on. I just want my creative purpose in you. I'm only concerned about what you're going to do through me. What Amen. are you going to do through me, Lord? And women, ask yourself that question every day. Lord, what do you want to do through me? Nothing else should matter. That's the only question that should matter to a woman. What are you going to do through me? Now, men, we have to ask ourselves other questions, and we're going to get to that shortly. But I just want to talk about women because, you know, their ministry is essential. Mm -hmm. It means everything. And it's truly, truly, truly very deep. And it, it's starting, I'm starting to understand it because men at times, we don't understand how deep that thing is. But we have to make sure we're, we're supporting our wives and understanding and not telling our wives, hey, serve me, be into me. No, I need her. Listen, the man of Jamel's dreams is Jesus Christ. I'm just a representative. That's all I am. That's the woman of her, that's the man of her dreams. It's Jesus. It's not Michael Taylor, right? I can fall short as a man. So for everyone on this call, the man of your dreams have to be Jesus Christ before you meet the man that you want to be with. He has to be the man of your dreams, Jesus. Amen. He's the good man. And what happens is we, we look for someone to substitute that, the true and living God, and we go wrong, and women go wrong there. Mm, mm. Go wrong in that area. The wow. man of your dreams is Jesus. All y'all women on this call have the same man of your dreams. It's Jesus Christ. He's the one. <laughs> it ain't us. Preach, preach. We just try our best to be great examples of Christ for those yeah. men, right? To those women who, who are truly seeking after a man of God now that truly love the Lord and truly know God. Now, if you're looking for something else, you're in trouble automatically. If you're dealing with somebody that ain't connected to Jesus, that's a whole different Bible study. But, but our job as men in these women's lives is to be the best example and representation of the man of their dreams who is Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, brother, brother Rick, can you go back for me one time? I missed something. I need to go back and touch on something. I'm sorry, guys. I don't want to be before y'all too long. I'm going to try to wrap up. Brother, uh, what did you stop at, brother Rick? 15. Okay. All right, do me a favor. I, I, I want you to just go back to 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 8. I missed something right then. I wanted you to read that verse because I started from a little at 11, but I wanted to do 8. So can you read verse uh, 1, Sam, 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse, verse 8 for me one second? Just that verse. Then said Elkanah, her husband to her, Hannah, why weepest thou? And why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am not I better to thee than ten sons? Stop right there. Now, this is her husband. Her husband said, Hannah, what's wrong with you? What's going on? You ain't eating? You ain't crying all the time? What's the matter? And I'm going to tell you something. I thought this was profound. Her, her created purpose was so deep that he didn't understand it. Men, how many times you go to our wives? What's the matter? What's wrong? What's the matter with you now? Am I doing this? Am I doing that? There's things going on with women, guys. That's way deeper than we can know. God knows it. We don't. He said, "Don't am I more important than ten sons?" See, he was like, "We got a relationship. We're doing good." He's like, "But she's but she wanted her career. Her creative purpose was her ministry. That's what he didn't understand. She had she had to have her ministry. She had to have her purpose." And I'm telling you right now, women, if you have a good man in your life, you're traveling overseas, you're doing this, but your creative purpose is missing. It's not going to work. One day you're gonna be mad, and I don't know why you're mad. He's going to look at you, what's going on? Your creator, God's going to tap you in the shoulder and say, I didn't make you this way. I didn't make you to just live your life for fleshly desires. There's a purpose I put in you that you have to walk in. And without that, you're missing it. Without Christ being in that place, it's going to be dissension there, tension there. And, and he went to like, he didn't even understand how deep her created purpose was. And men, we have to also understand we cannot deal with women in the aspect of trying to remove their creative purpose from them. I said that again, men, because some men, we don't, we, we care less about a woman's creative purpose than they do. We plan, no, don't worry about that. Don't worry about, you know, us having a family and being married and me taking responsibility for you. Let's just have a good time. That's the wrong mindset to have. Men, we talked about this on men's Bible study. Y'all know we had a conversation about this in depth. But we have to understand that our job is to co cultivate their creative purpose. And he looked at her and he said, come on now. And, and she looked at it. She could have said a whole bunch to him. What's powerful about Hannah, Hannah could say, you, you talking this way, you have, you have a son with your other wife. She didn't say anything. She just silent and she went and prayed. She went into prayer. She went to Jesus. She didn't fight her husband. She went to Jesus. See, that's a key principle there too. God never calls a woman to fight and, and to go into discernment with their, and, and battle with their husbands, even though, you know, 
women have, women have feelings too. They, they have feelings. They have their moments. They're gonna, they do have these disagreements. But God said, come to me about him. I will deal with him in a way that you can never deal with him. Why are you going to try to fight him? I didn't call you to do that. And today, a lot of, today, unfortunately, God cannot, cannot support and step in the way he wants to because like, you're not coming to me about him. You're not coming to me about this man. You want me to deal with this man? Come to me. I formed him. I'll deal with him in a way you couldn't even believe. And that's one thing, that's power in that, women. It's power in going to God to deal with your husbands. And for those men and women who are not married on this call, you have to have a marriage mindset. You have to have a mindset of marriage. You can't, men, you can't get with women and just throw them away after you're done with them. You have to take responsibility for every woman that you connect yourself with. You have to take responsibility. God hates them, hates when we just throw these women away. And today we have a bunch of women that's been thrown away and passed around. And we thought, what's wrong with them? It's our fault, man. Because mm. we dealt with them without taking responsibility. Amen. Amen. Mm. Every woman, young men on this call, every woman you deal with, lay down with, you better have a mindset to take responsibility for them. Mm. And I told women all the time, I said, woman, I'm married. I don't want to take responsibility for you. I'm going to stay with my wife. It's too much. That's a not enough. And that's the key Amen. thing. We, what, any, see, what, men, men of God, we know this. We understand we just can't lay around and be with this woman. We have to take responsibility for every woman we touch and deal with because God will move on us and deal with us if we do not. God wants us to have a responsibility mindset, men. We have to take responsibility for women. We can't just deal with them. I'm done now. I'm throwing her back out there like she's a fish in the ocean. God hates that. Amen, he hates brother. Mindset. He hates that way, men. We cannot operate that way. And that mindset is not a ministry-minded man. It's not a ministry-minded man, right? And for a woman that don't care about their created purpose in being a mother and raising her children in the Lord and humbling and being submissive to her husband in ministry, in the things of God, that's not a woman with a ministry mindset. A marriage mindset and a ministry mindset are synonymous. They both work the same. Brother Rick, let's, let's, let's keep coming down. And we're going to get ready to wrap this thing up. I got to climax this because we kind of went over time a little bit. Go ahead, brother. Then he answered and said, go in peace. And the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. And she said, thine may find grace in thy sight. So the woman went and did thee, and her countenance was no more sad. And they rose up in the morning early and worshiped before the Lord and returned and came to their house to, to Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. Before it came to pass, when the time was come about after Hannah had conceived, that she bare a son and called his name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked him of the Lord. And the man Elkanah and all his house went up to offer unto the Lord the yearly sacrifice and his vow. Stop right there, brother. But Hannah went not stop up. Stop right there, 21. Or she had... You good, brother. You can stop at 21. Thank you, brother uh, Rick. So what we got here, guys, brother Rick just read so eloquently. She had a son. She became pregnant. Her husband laid together. She bore a son. Prophet Samuel was born, meaning heard of God. She dedicated him to the son, which was powerful. Hannah went on to have more children after Samuel. Right, we'll get into that in our um as we go through the book of Samuel and men's study. But the powerful part is that um it said it went, she said if it rose up more in the morning, she worship, they worship before the Lord, right? And the powerful part is that she never, never, never swayed from her created purpose. She never deviated from her created purpose. It meant more to, to her than anything. More to her than anything. And that's the key thing as a woman is that y'all created purpose of what God put in y'all, which our created purpose is so deep that we can't understand it. Sometimes as men, there's something God put in y'all guys, y'all created purpose that is unique. And that created purpose, without that created purpose, without that mindset to want to a uh, mother and childbear and, and be submissive to your husbands in, in ministry, right? Without that, there's going to be a, 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 a I want to say something off because today I, I meet women, they, they have great careers. They look successful. They go to college. They get great jobs. They got great homes. They great got, I see a lot of women today in Manhattan. And I'm like, okay, but they look at me, they, I'm, something's missing. And I say, your creative purpose is missing. Your creative purpose is what, is what, is what grounds a woman, their creative purpose. You know, that's what grounds them. And I want to leave y'all with that thought. 
I'm going to leave y'all with that thought today. Now, men, y'all ain't getting off the hook. Got something for y'all. We got to go. We're going to stay in Samuel. Now, for my men on the call that have to have the right mindset, I want to go into 1 Samuel, and I'm going to be done. I'll, I'll be done. Oh, you want to say something, Janelle? Go ahead. Yeah, I, say something. I, I want to say something real quick just to the women before while he's getting the scripture to go into 1 Samuel. Um, for women, too, I think we have to also acknowledge um, places in our lives where we um, where we've said we didn't want children. And if that's somebody on this call, I know I've acknowledged that when I was young in my career and I just wanted to be an actress and things like that. Like we have to acknowledge and repent for that. Because if you're struggling now and you're thinking, why am I, you know, why is this, is this not happening for me? And, and one in children, you have to first acknowledge that the mindset wasn't right earlier on. Amen, sister. And I think, you know, I, I, I was, I was with someone that, and at the time I didn't want my creative purpose. I was with someone that also didn't want that creative purpose for me either. And the difference, um, you know, when you get with a man of God is they, they want the creative purpose for you as well, as much as you should want it. But you have to first confess your, confess your crimes and the violence you've done to yourself and not wanting it. Um, and that's all I'm going to say. Amen. Amen. Sorry for something redundant, guys. Sorry for something redundant, but I know she wanted to uh, share. Um, okay. First Samuel chapter 2, 13 to 17, Brother Rick. I know we press for time. I'm going to try to hurry up and wrap up, guys. And the priest's custom with the people was that when any man offered sacrifice, the priest's servant came while the flesh was in seething with a flesh hook of three teeth in his hand. And he stuck it into the pan or kettle or cauldron or pot. All that the flesh hook brought up, the priest took for himself. So they did in Shiloh unto all the Israelites that came thither. Also before they burned the fat, the priest servant came and said to the man that sacrificed, give flesh to roast for the priest, for he will not have sodden flesh of thee, but raw. And if any man said unto him, let them not fail to burn the fat presently, and then take as much as thy soul desireth, then he would answer him, nay, but thou shalt give it me now, and if not, I will take it by force. Stop right there. Wherefore, the sin of the young men was very great before the Lord, for men of the offering of the Lord. Amen. Stop right there, brother. Thank you. So, all right, guys, just to give you some overview. Um, these are Eli's sons. Eli was the priest at the time. He had sons who began to walk in their priestly, priestly role, and they began to do... Um, crazy things one of the things they would do was when they had an offering and back then they offered or their offering um was of uh, was more literal and they would have to bring the offering before the lord to be burnt and they would take a long fork and, and dig in the, dig in an offering and take for themselves it wasn't it wasn't directed to do that to god's offering it was ordered to burn it and what was left over they'll take as an offering you know as the all the ordinance of an offering stated underneath the um underneath the word of god but they would say let me take the best of myself I want to take the best of myself. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna wait before you do anything. Give it to me. They say, wait a minute. That's not. They just go to Eli's son and say, wait. Um, that's not the way we're supposed to do it. They just say, nah. Give it to me now. They just to force kind of strong arm, strong arm the uh, people when they came to the, the temple to give offerings. And the problem is, men, is that, and I'm using this for a mindset of a man. We can't look for capitalism. We can't look to capitalize off women and capitalize off ministry. There's a capitalist mindset today where we look at a woman now, how can I get what I want from her and get rid of her? That's the, that's the demonic mindset to have. We was raised that way. Our society tells us that's how we're supposed to move as men. The more women we get, the more numbers we got, you know, our society teaches that, but the word of God doesn't teach us that way. And for a long time, I, I looked up to men that had a lot of women and they, they, was, they had a capitalistic mindset and they capitalized off women and they capitalized in the streets and I thought that was the way to go, right? I thought that was it. I got everything. And not knowing that was demonic. And I'm using this as a, uh, gleaning from this, the Eli's sons to say, men, we cannot look to capitalize and take from a woman. We have to add and pour into them. We take responsibility and begin to pour into them. Right? As men of God on this call, those who know Christ Jesus, a woman shouldn't be with you and feel, not feel blessed, not feel like you're adding into their life and pouring into their life. Amen. Just distracting from them. 
Amen. You know, we shouldn't be looking to capitalize from her. What can I take from her? No, we should be like, okay, Lord, what should I, what could I add? What can I bring to the table? How can I begin to grow this woman? And what happens today is men mindset, unfortunately, is I'm going to capitalize from her, drain her dry as much as I want, and then I'm going to throw her away when I'm done. And that is demonic, my friends. I said it again, and I hate to sound redundant, but the Eli sons had a capitalistic mindset when it comes to dealing with people in the temple, and that capitalistic mindset destroyed them. It destroyed them. It destroyed their, their legacy, their father's house. There was a curse upon their father's house that God spoke about. We're not going to get into all that, but we have to be very careful with the capitalistic mindset. They, they, they also was even um, dealing with the temple girls, laying around with the women. And you see a lot of these men, unfortunately, you see um, men today, a lot of these ministries today, you, you go to these ministries, you feel like you got, you got robbed. You, you don't feel like you got added to. You feel like at the end of the day, they make you feel good. You come out emotional, but you're like, wait a minute, I, don't, I know less about God. Why am I, why do I feel defeated? You know, you just, you go there for that high, you come off that Sunday high, and then the rest of the week, you, you don't feel like you can sustain. Your hmm. ministry should be sustained. There should be an overflow of sustainability to your ministry. And to Cal's point, these men seem to have a little power with them, a little, little, you know, something that draws you, and they, and they draw you to them. And I, and I know, I, I see them like, wow, this is very, this is, wow, this makes me feel good. It feels great. And I'm like, okay, I need more than this to keep me. See, guys, this Sunday service is not enough to keep you guys. You guys have to have a full, healthy, vibrant relationship. <laughs> you know, you just can't live in your Christianity from Sunday to Sunday, from service to service. Amen. It has to be a, a, a full you know, like your body needs water every day and it needs food. That's the way you have to deal with Christ the same way. It's a dead to day walk. And we want to make sure that everybody in this ministry has a sustainable walk. But for my men not to get off subject, we cannot come into women's lives and deal with women with a capitalistic mindset. We cannot come into ministry with a capitalistic mindset. We did not start hard drive ministry looking to capitalize. Right, um, people. I, I remember I was younger than the Lord, and I was in the barbershop preaching, and the man came to me from ICC and said, "Brother, you got, you know, you're very dynamic. We'd love to put you on our payroll." I said, "I can't do it. I don't want to. I, I like to be here." He didn't understand. He looked at me puzzled. I said, um, "Nah, I don't want to make. I, I'd rather just do my trade." Because one thing I realized is that it's a difference from raising up disciples and members. We're not looking for members. We're looking for disciples and men. Once Amen. again, you preach the gospel and you deal with a woman. Look to pour into her. Look to add to her life. Look to elevate and lead her and take responsibility for her. Do not look to just capitalize from her and throw her away. I'm going to stop there because we're pressed for time. I got one more scripture. I'm going to close out. Mm. Amen. We don't have the time. We don't have the time. So, Brother Rick, can you just go to this last scripture for me? And I'm going um, to close it out. But we, we're past time. We usually don't go long, guys. We, we're not too long winded. Uh, brother Rick, the last scripture is going to be 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 11 through 15, brother. I'm going to close out. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection, but I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first born, formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing, if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. Amen. That's verse 15, brother. You finished 15, right? Yes, sir. Thank you, brother. Thank you for that. Very well, very eloquently read. I, it's a lot right here. We just talked about it. She said they'll be saved through childbearing. And I like what he says. He says, well, women learn in silence. Like people read that scripture and be like, what, God was a male chauvinist? What do you mean? Women stay silent. What? You know, women today, what you mean stay silent, right? It was a reason that was said, guys. It wasn't that God was just telling the women, y'all just be quiet. No, there was, in the, in the services they had, guys, they used to sit separately. And what was happening, women was women was shouting out to their husbands, Tommy, Clarence, in the middle of service, right? And he was, they was, like, and he was basically saying, hey, guys, you can't be disruptive in service. Y'all can't be yelling at your husbands. And Nah, it has to be order and service. So there was a disruptiveness going on in service, so they had to be ordered. See, it goes back to Brother Cal's point about that order, right? He said, Adam, who was not deceitful, but Eve, who was, he said, and Adam was formed first. It's an order. It's not that, see, we, we, we're not, we're greater than women in administrative order. We're not better than a woman, though. No. Not better, right? And the powerful thing is, he says, that, that Eve, who was, was deceived, 
Meaning that in the garden, Adam made a conscious decision, like, oh man, I'm gonna bite this apple. I know what I'm doing right here. We ain't supposed to bite it, whatever. Well, fruit. They never said apple, but the fruit. He bit it. And Eve was deceived into it. Now people always say, what was what was <laughs> what was Adam at when devil when devil was deceiving Eve? What was he at? You know, some people say he was sleeping, they don't know, but they always say that question. I think it's funny. But to take it a step further, take a step further than that. The point of the matter is there's administrative order. And our job is to protect these women from being deceived. Men on this call, your job is to protect women from being deceived. Protect them even from themselves. To love Christ like love Christ loved the church is to constantly take care of them and tend to them. We should be protecting them from being deceived. Right? We know our women are more prone to it based on what the scripture says, right? And we, we're more of the, the thinkers of conscientious individuals, not saying we're better than women, because there's some decisions I make that my wife is like, not, 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 not right there. So she's always looking and she's always adding. But a lot of stuff that she tells me is a reminding of the things that I told her because I needed to be reminded at that time. But if we never pour into our, our wives and our spouses, mm. they can never remind of the things that we need to be reminded because men, we tend to forget. Mm. Tend Amen. To forget those things, right? So my wife would share something with me that'd be what I shared with her two years ago. Like you shared this with me, remember that? Like, that's right, sister, I did, right? So we gotta understand, but when we don't pour into our wives, we don't protect them. We don't build a fortress of protection around them deceptions coming in because women are constantly being attacked satan is constantly talking to them as they talking to men too but they, he's constantly with women like brother cal said these ministries are filled with mostly women so satan always constantly is in your wife's ear men husbands on this call satan is in her ear you better make sure you're protecting her that you're building a fortress of truth of god's word around her to protect her and women when you have a man in your life that is protecting you spiritually Understand the wealth in that. Understand the wealth in that. And I'm not trying to sit here, I'm not just gonna sit here and browbeat y'all men, but I'm always gonna tell y'all that there's a blessing in protecting women. And women, please humble and be submissive into you to men in your life that God is using to pour the word into you, your husbands. That's very important. That's very important in the way God's gonna deal with you. The way you deal with your husband is the way God's gonna deal with you. He said, go back to your husband first. You can't talk to me yet until you go back to him because he said, I call them one flesh. But the main thing about what he was saying in this particular text is the fact that there was a disorder in service and it had to be an order. There was an order in heaven. There was an order that Cal talked about and that order must be maintained. It's not about nobody being better. I can't be a mother. Only, only my wife can be a mother, right? She can't be the head of the household. She can't be a husband. We have to know our role. We have to know our suits. We have to know exactly the part that God called us to play in marriage and in ministry. That is essential. That is essential, guys. Right? And, on, and until we know those two things, there's constantly going to be friction between relationships. All this friction between relationships is because of the fact that we don't know our place, our creative purpose. We don't, the women don't know their creative purpose. Men don't, men don't have a, a mindset of responsibility. And as long as these things continue happening, you're going to continue seeing fractured relationships. The minute we keep, we could kick God's way out. I don't care how much, how great his credit score is. I don't care if he's six foot five and handsome. I don't care how fine she might look to y'all, y'all men on this call. If y'all keep God out and keep his way out, there's going to be friction and dissension in that relationship. And even though in that, some relationships that might seem well and great and all that, it's not because you're away from your purpose. You're in trouble. You in trouble, and I'm gonna close out with a testimony, and, and I, I'm gonna get a little vulnerable because I look at everybody on this call as family, and I look at you guys as um, as uh, my brethren, and Amen. I pretty much know you guys. You know, it's it's a blessing to fellowship with people you know. Hmm. I love that. You know, me ministries I go to, and it's five thousand people, and they, they don't even know each other. They don't Amen, know what they Amen. So I'm gonna get vulnerable for a minute. And I'm gonna close out. When I first met Janelle, and uh, we was going through it, and she was saying to me, she said, "Well." Brother, you know, you wanted me to use the day, day after pills and stuff like that. And I said, uh, no, sister, we're not going to do none of that stuff. We're going to be together. You know, we're going to um, whatever God decides to do. Um, he going to do now. I wasn't always like that. And um, I'm not going to say act like I was always this guy I was oh, I was always like that. I was a man that would tell women at one point to do those things and, and 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 I think about that today and think about what God took me from that I don't think like that no more y'all excuse me he changed me 
Amen. I'm sorry. Powerful. Powerful. Amen, he brother Mike. Amen. Changed, Amen, brother Mike. He changed me. He gave me a mindset to understand that I have to trust God in the area of creative purpose. Mm. I can't block God and what God wants to do. And for many years, I struggled with that. Mm. I struggled mm. with, you know, having children. I can't afford it. I can't can't be too much, too much on me. It's, you can't. I had to let that go. And she looked at me and she said, I've been through that. Well, her ex, she said, I was my ex, you know, she made me do it. And I looked at her one day and I said, no, no, sister. We pregnant, we having this, we having whatever God gives us, no matter what. Mm. And um, it took a long time, guys, for God to get me to that place. Amen. I just want y'all to understand, young men on this call, do not Amen. give any woman whatever having that money so responsibility. And women, do not, young women, do not do violence to yourselves. Having these abortions, it will destroy you, it will set you back, it will hurt you. God could come in, he still use you, but there's so much that we've done to ourselves. And God has given us grace, you know, to women that have had abortions and did things to themselves. You know, them things are unreversible, it hurts us. But today, I thank God that God has given us enough grace to still be able to be sons and daughters today. Amen. Amen, brother. How? Amen. 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 Amen, bro. Preach on. Man. And I'm uh I'm closing out with that guys. I love y'all. That's, mm. That's a tough one to follow right there. Bro. Mm -hmm. Uh Bishop, you had something going on over there? Yeah, I just want to say um uh, it's powerful Mike. Well, I love him because Mike could tell you, he makes sure you get it. Out of us three, Mike has said until you will have no excuse. He'll say it <laughs> in 477 different ways. Amen. But I love the brother, though. Man, he's powerful hey, little brother. Man. And not just, you know, it goes a long way. Not just abortion, contraceptives, you know, all type of stuff. You know, um, trying to stop God's purpose. You wonder why God blocks us and things, you know, spiritually. And, and I ain't always talking about block financially. There's a joy. There's a peace, right? There's there's so much that comes with letting God do what he want to do. And you and through you, you know? There's, there's, there's something he just gives us. You know, that the world can't give us, no matter how much money, no matter what the world does to tell us that that's going to make us happy. You know, so I just want to just say that, um, you know, we just got to trust God in ministry. We got to trust God in every area. We got to let God do his thing through us, men and women of God. Amen. Brother, Brother Ron, it's back to you. Amen, brothers and sisters. I, I hope you guys were as blessed with today's service as I was. I mean, you know, it, it never ceases to amaze me. Uh, how even at this stage of my life, God can always uh, teach and show me and open my mind and open up my heart. And, you know, guys, we can go on and on about understanding the foundation of church ministry, but I love what uh, these brothers did today and these sisters. Uh, thank God for your uh, testimonies as well, Sister Jackie, uh, Sister Janelle. We so appreciate that. Is that if we can't get this part right, uh, we can't get our homes right get our relationships right with the people who we chose to spend the rest of our lives with, then I, I guess we we really do have to look ourselves in the mirror and ask God uh, to continue to help and bless us. Um, and on that note, uh, I think we'll stop here for today. Uh, I just thank God for everything we, we learned. Floor's always open before we close out. I'm not going back to Egypt. I'm not going back, yeah. I ain't going back to Egypt. I ain't going back here. Yeah. I ain't going back to my lifestyle. I ain't going back to my lifestyle. I ain't going back to my lifestyle. Yeah. I'm not going back no more. Every day I hit sin knocking at the front door. A new day, a new trial. It's a struggle, but Lord keep me humble. I'm not going back no more. Every day I hit sin knocking at the front door. A new day, a new trial. It's a struggle, but Lord, keep me humble. A new morning, I wake up, wash up. New grace, new mercy, Jesus still Lord. It's real every day for a Christian, man. Flesh first spirit, it's a civil war. Banging mad loud, sin at the door. Louder and louder, but I still ignore. Cross on my back, gotta keep pressing. Exercise the word, gotta keep stretching. Jesus Christ, we still confessing. But you're not getting it yet. The living water, come get wet. And you won't thirst again Focus, free from sin Born again, yes I grin huh. And I'm laughing
Listen, man, listen, his love embrace me, man Yeah, I'm not turning back, man I'm not going back no more Every day I hit sin, knocking at the front door A new day, a new trial It's a struggle, but Lord, keep me humble I'm not going back no more Every day I hit sin, knocking at the front door A new day, a new trial It's a struggle, but Lord, keep me humble